Hi, Andrew Kramer with VideoCopilot.net, and thanks for tuning in once again. What I have here is a bunch of images shot by my good friend Judy Haley, and she's a professional photographer, as you can see, and these are just some shots that I happen to have on my system here. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a slideshow using these pictures. Now, we've all been asked to make a slideshow one time or another, and what I'm going to show you is just an effective way to make a decent slideshow. So let's go ahead and start by resizing all of our images to a size that is a little bit more manageable in After Effects. So a lot of times your images come from scans or CDs or digital images and the sizes are all over the place. Well, to work more effectively in After Effects, you want to have a reasonable size picture, but also it helps that they're all uniformly sized when you're working to uh, create certain effects. So with the help of Photoshop, I'm going to resize all of my images down to 800 by 600, which is a little bit bigger than 720 by 480 in which we'll be working. So here I am in uh, Photoshop CS2, and the first thing I want to do is import one of these images. So I'm just going to drag one of the images in, and it's going to open it up. Okay, so here we are, and I want to go over to my Actions palette, so I'm going to resize this, go to my Actions, bring down the default actions, and what we're going to do is click on the Make New Action button and name it Resize to 800 by 600, and then just choose Record. And what this is going to do is record anything I do from this point on. And now I want to perform the action I actually want to apply to all of my pictures here. So I'm going to choose File, Automate, Fit Image. And we're going to set it to 800 by 600. Now you can set this to be a little bit more if you know you have like group pictures you want to then zoom in on later or something like that. But for the most part, 800 by 600 should work just fine. And I'm going to hit OK. And basically what this means is the image width will not exceed 800 and the height will not exceed 600. So if your frame is 800 by 600, the picture will squeeze itself down to fit in the image without distorting it in any way. So I'm going to hit OK. And now my image has been sized down. And if I go to actual pixels here, you'll see my image is uh, probably 600 tall. So then I'm going to go and hit Stop. And then I'm going to close this picture and do not save it. I have my action here. And now what I'm going to do is go File, Automate, batch and what we're gonna set up is a batch action that's gonna run through all my pictures and apply this resize action to everything so I'm gonna set it to the default actions which is all these here in this folder and I wanna set the action to resize to 800 by 600 and I wanna choose a folder as my source click on my original images folder then I'm gonna hit OK we can also include subfolders, but for this particular case, I'm not going to. Now, the destination is what it's going to do with these pictures after it processes them. Sometimes you don't want to erase over your original pictures, obviously, because you may want to go back to them later. So I'm going to choose Set to a Folder, and I'm going to set Choose. So I'm going to browse to my Output folder called 800 by 600, select it, and choose OK. Now what's going to happen is it's going to save the image into this location after it performs this action. Then you hit OK and go sit back and relax for a few minutes. As you can see, all my pictures have been resized and are ready to import into After Effects. So what I'm going to do is take my 800 by 600 folder and drag it into After Effects by holding down Alt. We can drop it into the project and it will import the folder along with all the contents inside. So now all my pictures are now inside of my project folder. I can then start creating a slideshow. Now if I select the first one, go down, hold shift, select the last one, I can then drag it into the make new comp button and this fancy dialog will come up. I can say create a single composition, use the dimensions for say any picture. I want the duration of each picture to be four seconds and I don't want to add it to the render queue. I want to sequence the layers. That means put them back to back. And I want them to overlap 20 frames and dissolve. 
I'm going to hit OK. And now if I play through this, you'll see all of the layers kind of fade together. And if I set my composition to my output uh, size, so in this case NTSC DV, that would create my composition this size. Now you can see all the pictures fit in here. They're a little bit big, but that's okay. But the problem is this is After Effects, and while this is a slideshow, it's not very impressive. So we're going to not do it that way. We're going to just go ahead and delete this composition. What I'm going to do instead is create a new composition, and this time use my output settings, which would be NTSC DV, choose OK, set the duration to 4 seconds exactly. The duration of the composition in this case is going to be the duration of each image and I want all my pictures to play for 4 seconds. Then I'm going to hit OK and now I have a 4 second comp and now I'm going to drag all of my images out. So I'm going to select the first one, select the last one holding down shift and drag them into the comp. And the order in which you select them is the order in which they're going to be distributed. So make sure the images are in order or if you hold down control you can select them in however order you want. Anyway, I'm going to go here, select all these layers, hit Alt Home and line them up. Now what I'm going to do is apply some parameters to one layer and then copy those parameters and apply them to all the layers. So I'm going to solo this first layer here and I'm going to hit S to bring up the scale properties go to the beginning of the composition, set the stopwatch, go to the end and set a keyframe. So now I have two keyframes at the beginning and end. Then I'm going to size this down just inside the composition. Now, you might have a hard time getting it exact, so if you right click on the layer, choose Transform, Fit to Comp Height, then it will fit it in there. But be careful because if you change the Fit to Comp, it'll stretch it out and you don't want to do that. So just Fit to Height and that will work good. Then let's go ahead and move to the end here and let's set the scale up to just a little bit more than that. So depending on the size of your input image, the scale will change because it's relative to the size of the layer. So we want it to start at 80, apparently, and we want it to go to, say, 90. So that's a 10% increase over time. So if I were to copy this scale parameter to all the layers, then I would have a nice slideshow where all the layers would slightly push in and all cross dissolve throughout the piece but this is After Effects and I think we should take it to the next level. So I'm going to add an effect that will just slightly enhance this slideshow. So with the layer selected I'm going to choose Effects, Blur, Fast Blur and I'm going to set the blurriness to say 25 and I want to repeat the edge pixels. Okay. Then I'm going to set the stopwatch for blurriness, move forward to one second and turn the blurriness down to zero so that my image now slowly blurs into focus and if these were all sequenced together they would not only blur into focus but they would also fade together which would make for a nice effect however I don't want the image to be totally blurred out like this so actually I'm gonna hit U on the keyboard to bring up all the keyframe parameters and I'm gonna delete this second keyframe I'm gonna go ahead and just leave this effect blurry the entire time but on top of this I'm gonna choose effect channel CC composite and what I'm gonna do is composite this original source image on top of it so watch what happens when I change the opacity it kinda of makes a cool diffusion look rather than a full-on blurred out look so instead of keyframing the blurriness I'm gonna keyframe this layers opacity over top itself and because this effect is all part of this one layer I'm not duplicating layers and causing a mess in my composition I could then copy these parameters to all my other layers and they will all be part of one layer. So let's go ahead and keyframe the opacity of the CC composite effect. So I'm going to set the stopwatch at the beginning of the composition, move to one second, and turn the opacity up to 100%. And now what's going to happen is it's going to slowly kind of go like that. Then I'm going to hit U, uh, U, and I'm going to shut the keyframe off for blurriness because I don't need it. And I'm going to select these two opacity keyframes for the composite effect and choose F9. And let's go ahead and preview this. Okay, so it basically kind of just slowly comes in and it looks pretty darn nice. So let's go ahead and copy all of our effects to the rest of our layers. So to do this, um, you collapse the layer and instead of hitting U, we're going to hit U three times. U, U, U. So then I'm going to select Fast Blur, 
hold down shift, select composite, and then select scale. So now I'm copying all the parameters that make up this cool effect. Then I'm going to choose edit copy. Then I'm going to select all my other layers besides my first one. Hold down shift, choose edit paste. And now all of my layers now have this very cool effect applied to it. But how do we get these layers now to sequence themselves? Well, select the first layer, go down, select the last layer, choose animation, keyframe assistance, sequence layers. And we want them to overlap and we want the duration of their overlap to be 20 frames and we want the transition to be dissolved front layer. Then you hit OK. Now all the layers have then been pushed into time and are fading together. So now if I go composition, composition settings, I can increase my duration to say two minutes. I'm not sure how long this will be. Um, zoom out here and now you can see all the layers are here. Then if I go to the last layer, hit O, that goes to the last frame of this layer, hit N, trims the work area, then I right click on the work area, trim to comp area, and then it's exactly the length. Then if I go to the beginning of my first one, hit T, I could bring up the opacity and then fade it up, go forward a few frames, set a keyframe, go back and set it to zero. Likewise, go to the very last one, hit T, hit O, turn on the opacity stopwatch, go back 10 frames, set the stopwatch, and then double click on the last one, hit zero, return so that it fades out at the end. Now, let's watch this. Okay, so you're thinking, well, did that take a long time or was I just teaching it really slowly? Well, let's find out. Composition, new composition, set the duration to whatever length you want the images to be, four seconds, and set your preset. Choose OK. Go to your images, select the first image, go down to the last image, hold down Shift, drag them out to your comp, hit Alt Home to bring it to the beginning, then select the first layer, hit S to bring up the scale, click it, go to the end, set a keyframe, go to the beginning, right click, choose transform, fit to height, go to the last keyframe, set it to 90%, that way it goes from 80 to 90, then go to effect, blur, fast blur, 25, set repeat edge pixels, select the layer, choose effects, channel, CC composite, change the opacity to zero, go to the first frame, set the keyframe, move forward one second, set it to 100%, hit UU on the keyboard, bring up all the parameters, select the first one, hold down shift, select fast blur composite and scale, hit control C, select all your other layers, hold down shift, select the last one, choose edit paste, then hit the first layer, hold down shift, select the last layer, choose animation, keyframe assistance, sequence layers, overlap 20 frames, dissolve front layer, choose OK, composition settings, set the comp to two minutes, choose OK, zoom out, go to the last frame, hit O, hit N, right click on the work area, trim comp to work area, go to the first frame, hit T, bring up the opacity, set a keyframe, turn the value to zero, go forward 10 frames, set a keyframe, set the value to 100, likewise go to the last layer, hit O to go to the last frame, hit T, bring up the opacity, set it to zero, hold down, control shift, go back 10 frames, set a keyframe, 100% and it fades out at the end and that's it. There's our slideshow. I don't know how long that took but you could imagine. Now once you get down the whole actions thing you could be knocking slideshows out in minutes. I'm not kidding, minutes. Add a music track to the background and render this thing out. Add to render queue and, uh, you know, you're good to go. Well, I hope you found this tutorial useful. There's plenty more at videocopilot.net, along with some cool resources and some great products. So check us out. Likewise, if you haven't heard, Creative Cal Master Series has just released a DVD hosted by myself called Serious Effects and Compositing. Check it out. There's a lot of cool stuff. Go to my site, videocopilot.net forward slash serious fx thanks for watching and i'll see you next time
So we just slide it up. And now we got a nice little shadow, okay, that kind of follows along with what he's doing. Okay, pretty cool. If you blur it out slightly before you pull the key, it'll make for a much smoother edge. So already you kind of see the reflection of the window, right? By setting the glow on an adjustment layer, when we brighten it up, it'll cover over the tops of all the layers, which is a very, very cool effect that kind of makes it seem like the fire is coming around them. And we're going to change the transfer mode here to overlay but I definitely want to try to give it more of a third dimension. Okay, so you're thinking to yourself, well, this looks pretty good, but you know, I didn't pay good money for a tutorial to show me how to draw an outline of a muzzle fire. So I'm gonna hit apply. Tracking data has applied itself. 